In today's video, we are going to be turning this local website into this, a new modern look using Figma. Okay, so this is the current website for the old brew house. We're going to start with pulling the logo into Figma. Now, unfortunately on their site, they don't actually have a PNG of the logo, so we're going to have to recreate it in a sense and just get something close enough. Now, what I like to do at the start of a project is set up some kind of grid. Now, I usually go with a 12 column grid, 20 pixel spacing, 80 pixels margin. This can change depending on what type of project you're doing. Now we want to have a look at some of the images they have on their current website. Now, these are not very usable, so let's have a look on Unsplash and see if they have a similar thing. Because what we're trying to do is we are just trying to convey uh, a website redesign. Obviously, we don't want to choose images that are too far removed from what the actual place looks like. It's got to convey the look and feel of the business and sometimes using example images that you could then get a photographer to go shoot later on that can be really useful. So let's paste in some text that we have on the website and let's get to work on our hero. So we're going to start with dragging a big frame across the hero. Now what we're going to have in this section is two call to actions for the main things that the business does, which is a food menu and they also have rooms uh, to stay in. So I think this would be quite cool having these two boxes, these call to actions sitting in the right of the hero. So we're going to just experiment with that. A lot of what we're doing here when we're designing is we're just trying things using the canvas more or less as a sketch board and it gets more and more refined as it goes on. So here we have two call to actions with a stroke. Now we're going to play with the opacity of these and we're actually going to add a cool effect to it which is this layer blur and you see this quite a lot on new websites. There's a lot of, um, it's kind of a trendy thing right now so we're just going to try it out because it does look quite cool. Now if we give these strokes the same color as the logo and then just re reduce the opacity a little bit that might look quite good. The key thing is with whatever you're doing, you want it to be consistent. So you will see me copying and pasting a lot of different elements and changing them, but there's a lot of going back and forward. Here, we're just loosely trying to get the navigation nailed down. We know what sort of pages. It's quite a straightforward site. There's very few pages. Restaurant, rooms, about, contact. That's kind of all we need for now. Now, I'm not going to spend too long playing with this just now. I just kind of want to get it on the page and get the other elements in. And then that's kind of where I get a better idea of how everything should sit. So the next thing is getting the call to action styled up. So we're going to have this bottom one being the menu. Um, because I think when you go to a restaurant website, the, the first, well, the two main things you want to do when you go to it is you want to see what's on the menu and you want to be able to book it. So that's going to be important, but it, there could be users that are coming to the site that are coming to rent a room. So we're going to make that very, very obvious. One of the first things you see on the page. Now, the good thing about the current website is that it actually has really good copy. So I've been going back and forward between it and grabbing little snippets of text that I think are written quite well. And it tells the user what things do, but in a way that actually sells it. So above menu, we've got homemade food all day, every day. Now that just sounds good. And above the room, you know, what makes this hotel different? That it's in a 1600s building steeped in history. So whenever you can find little selling points like that, then you should use it to your advantage because it's not only going to make the design better, it's going to make the user convert better on the website. Now we want to get the navigation fixed a little bit. Now I do go back and forward across this video kind of tweaking at it. Um, the problem I'm having right now is that I know the font I'm using just now isn't going to be the final font. 
um, but I'm still kind of sketching out ideas so I am just still running with it trying little things the more little things that you try is where you kind of figure out the magic and what you're doing and playing with everything going back and forward and refining cross comparing things with different elements that is where you get your consistency and for me it just ends up coming out to an overall clean style here i'm adjusting the size of the text box now this is one thing not to be overlooked you know with good copy it's just as important about how well it sits on the page and a big part of that is character length word length how bite size is it just to read now we actually have a pretty big message in our hero so you know to make it short and snappy and um, then we don't want to have too many words on one line so we will add in a facebook icon in the header um, because i think they're quite active on facebook and here finally we're going to change that times new roman font with this one which is a little nicer well it's a lot nicer um, now it's only going to work at quite a large size because it's quite a decorative font so we will use it somewhat sparingly but I think it gives it a far classier high-end sort of look and then we're going to change this font too now you have to be careful that whatever fonts you choose that they work together and I think this is quite a nice font pairing but you have to be careful if you are using more of a decorative font maybe have more of a sans serif for some of your smaller text sizes just so it's readable now one thing we're going to add into the header is a book now button just in case the user happens to be on a page that doesn't have such a prominent call to action to do so that it means that it's always going to sit there it's always going to be one click away and just right up there with the navigation so we're going to add that in and we are going to define our first button now we are going to just do this loosely and then we will come back to probably polishing it up so we more or less have our hero now now it is time to go on to the other sections of the website and um, we will be going back and forward and changing little things just kind of as you notice it uh, it's always good to be scanning the website so although you might be looking at one section kind of scanning the website you might go up you might change one thing higher up on the page and then that might define how you want to design lower down here i am also adding like a subtle gradient to the bottom of the hero image because i don't want it to feel like an image on top of the page i kind of want it to blend with the content underneath and so adding a gradient to the bottom which is going to match your background color is a good way to do this now we're going to take our hero title and we're going to work on some of the copy for the next section now i think we'll have each section focus on the different parts the food and the rooms um, and we're going to use more st well, stock images that we could uh, hopefully get the client to go shoot later on now obviously you have to be careful if you feel like it is not within the client's means whatsoever to get photography done then you know be a lot more straightforward with your design maybe choose a design that is less focused on the imagery but for the sake of this website where it's just a concept the client doesn't exist it is just a local business that i am just making this for fun and um, we're going to pretend that the client wants to get good photography and that's just obviously going to make the website look better it's kind of a cheat good images good assets that's really what makes good websites so now we're going to pull down this book now button down into what will be our food section and um, this will just be a further call to action to see the menu you know if we had more pages and um, or if we had a food specific page that we maybe just wanted to talk specifically about the food and have more details on there then we could link it off to that but at this point really we're just trying to build structure and style and this section here i play around with quite a bit just trying to get the text to sit and here you can kind of see that decorative font falling apart like i said before it doesn't really work at a smaller size so 
probably going to make sense to use our other sans serif font which is going to be far more readable at a smaller size and then we're just going to play around with sizing and placement and just relative spacing between each element and a lot of this we're defining now because it is a new section and what we define here will come across into the other sections of the website but that is looking quite good and if you've seen there when i just resized the page and that started moving if you make sure your constraints are set to left and top that will stop that from happening now just for a little bit of fun as an experiment see if this is going to work we're going to draw in this crudely drawn scribble uh, which should be a flowy line but because I'm drawing it with a pencil it doesn't really look like it but we're just trying things out here so if we give that a yellow color and run it across now if we set that behind the images it might look quite cool for giving it just a little bit of style and we're gonna add in another line and we'll probably change the opacity of these down as well just so they're less prominent but adding little details like this, um, if you think it fits the brand, it can help make your website come from looking like a, a stock template to looking more unique to your brand. And you know, maybe you have detailing in your restaurant and all of a sudden with these little squiggles and ornate sort of touches, it, ref re it reflects that. So we're going to keep it for now and so we've just wrapped this entire section in a frame and now we can duplicate it down and this will then be our room section which is mostly going to be the same but it's going to be mirrored onto the other side and um, and then we'll drag the text along too and that section is almost complete we just need to change out the images now I think we'll get rid of the squiggles on that section because you don't want to have too much but just little touches here and there can be good. Now on the current website they do not have good images of their rooms but you can get an idea of what they look like so we may be able to grab images from Unsplash that don't show the entire room it just shows a bed or a bedroom so we will have a look at that. Now this is the perfect sort of image that we're looking for because it doesn't show too much um, so we will just use it. And this image too is go actually going to give us the perfect sort of balance because we've got a light and dark for each section um, and that looks quite cool. Now a super important thing for a restaurant or a hotel and um, something in the hospitality business is social proof and with that comes TripAdvisor reviews and maybe testimonials from customers so we definitely want to include that because this place is very highly rated on TripAdvisor and so we definitely want people to know about that so we're going to pull in some TripAdvisor graphics and we will change things up here quite a bit just to make it look nice we, we mainly want to shout about the fact that we have such a good rating and we might throw in a testimonial too um, but we don't want to have too many just generic TripAdvisor embeds with you know the classic buttons we're going to kind of give this our own twist and um, our own style that's going to fit in with the website rather than just be a TripAdvisor embed on their website they also have this certificate of excellence which is another TripAdvisor thing so we should definitely include that. I don't know how common these things are, but maybe maybe the users don't know how common these things are. It sounds good, so we'll put that on for sure. And we don't need too much in this section. I think it already makes it seem like a place that people like. So now we're gonna start working on how to find the place and contact information because that is gonna be really important. So down below, we're working on our next section, which is our how to find us. Now in here, we're just gonna have the usual stuff. We're gonna have the address, and I think we're gonna put in a map as well. Um, a big map, because as visual, you know, it's one thing having the address, but being able to see a map from above, you can know exactly where it is. 
Now, I'm just using a Google image here, but if you were building out this website, you would use the Google Maps plugin probably. And there's ways to customize how you want to have it. So you can have like a dark mode map, which is gonna sit well on your website if it's a dark themed website. But for ease of use, I've just used an image for now, just to show what that could look like. So we're gonna add in the other contact information. And here, I'm experimenting with the big font, see if that's gonna work. And then that takes us to the last section of the website, which is just gonna be a simple footer because there's not many pages on this website. The footer is mainly just gonna mirror the navigation. And it's also gonna be useful having the book now button in the footer because it means that if a user scrolled the page, it means that the button is right there to press. So you always wanna think about the user journey, where they start, where they end and where you want them to click. So having a, a good call to action, the footer is always a good thing. Now, what we could have done with this website and you know, this would be up to choice. It'd be very easy to do, but you could make the, the header, the navigation sticky at the top. So it follows you down the page, but for this page, cause it's quite short, I don't think we're going to do that, but we don't really need to because we've got the navigation at the bottom anyway. Now we have everything in place. Now it's really just a case of going over the website, adding in little details, maybe making some consistency between things. But you know, when you've got the structure in, this part of web design is always the most fun because you've got everything sitting more or less where it should. And this is where you can get really creative with making your extra little bits, the extra mile stuff. Um, what I call it. And I think that is what takes a web design from being good to great is the more like extra mile stuff you can add to it. And this stage is where you can do a lot because um, you can kind of look at the picture as a whole and anything you change is probably changing multiple elements. And so changing things like buttons. I even tried out this little thing here where I was going to make an outline of the brew house. Um, and now this would be good. You could spend the time to do this well, but I just wanted to do it quickly to see if it was worth something doing well, but I then actually decided probably just go with images and I would probably have these images maybe just show on hover or show by default if the client liked it like that. But this is our finished website, which I think is looking a lot better, a lot more modern. Now there is one thing, one very, very important thing that I missed out on this design, which I realized at the end, I'll keep it out see if you guys can spot it what one important thing am i missing let me know thank you guys for watching the video if you liked it please consider hitting the like button and subscribe if you're new to this channel and you want to see more content like this i'll catch you guys in the next one